Time to let it rip on the panel tonight, Fatina Adramba, a U of M graduate and director of the American Arab Muslim and Minority Advocacy League. Rabbi Asher Lopatin, executive director of the Jewish Community Relations Council and the American Jewish Committee of Metro Detroit. Osama Sabani, the longtime publisher of the Arab American News and the chief spokesperson for the Congress of Arab American Organizations. Also with us, Daniel Ashan, counsel for public diplomacy of the Israeli consulate to the Midwest. And as always, anchor attorney, Charlie Langton. Bettina, we begin with you. Yes, we have great news tonight. We have a ceasefire, but at what cost? So many have died. Yeah, I mean, as we uh, celebrate this news, it's, it's kind of bittersweet. Um, ceasefire, what does that mean exactly? Um, for the Palestinians, life will continue in its miserable, deplorable conditions. They will continue to be dispossessed. They will continue to be harmed and shot. Their land will continue to be illegally confiscated. So uh, as we kind of take in the news of, of the ceasefire, the, the reality is for Palestinians, they don't have the luxury of the bomb shelters and they don't have, um, you know, the things that we would associate with the ceasefire. Life, sadly, I think will continue to be, be miserable for the, the Gazans who are in open air prison. Rabbi, I have to ask you, why agree to stop the fighting now when this same deal could have been made days ago? Well, I think uh, Israel had to wait till the uh, missiles were going to uh, stop hitting their cities. And, you know, frankly, hitting Palestinian Israelis, there is a tragedy of hitting their own people. And Palestinian Israelis are thriving. And Palestinians in the West Bank have a higher standard of living than most Arab countries around them. It's just tragically that Hamas invests all their money in rockets instead of caring for their people, except for the humanitarian aid that Israel is still letting in. In the middle of this war, Israel was letting in that aid and they had to stop it because rockets were falling over. So Israel had to wait till those rockets stopped. Israel had to wait till there could be enough of a deterrent. And now, thank God, I hope, we get at least seven years of peace, but you're right, it won't be peace for the Palestinians in Gaza because they're still under the iron grip of Hamas that is sworn to destroy the Jewish state. Osama, you were on a call with the White House this week as the rockets were flying and the missiles were falling. You were not happy with President Joe Biden. Has that impression changed now that we have a ceasefire? No, I, I am not really, I'm still not happy with the president and the foreign policy of our country that has been failing everywhere, uh, from Iraq to Libya to Afghanistan uh, to Syria to Lebanon, and, and certainly in the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Let me, let me be very clear. Today's, today, ceasefire is a band-aid on a big, huge wound. It's a small band-aid on a huge wound. So nothing is going to happen. I mean, right, right now we're delaying another confrontation. See, the issue in here is occupation. Occupation has to go. This is the only way you can address this issue. A two-state solution that has been accepted in 1993, it has not materialized. Why it has not materialized? Because the Israelis won't do it, will not accept it. So now they continue to take more homes and destroy more villages and bring more settlements that are illegal. So how do you resolve this issue? Now we have a ceasefire, right? We have ceasefires before. This is not going to change. This is not going to do anything. If the administration is very serious about addressing this issue, they have to address occupation. The Israelis have to stop occupying people. This is 73 years. Look, he will, 73 years ago, the Israelis went into Palestine and kicked 700,000 Palestinians out. Today, millions of Palestinians are going in. It's not gonna, it's not gonna go away. You have to address the issue that started the whole mess. Well, Daniel, let me talk to you about that. We told this ceasefire tonight is without conditions. Although earlier Hamas had demanded that Israel stop its incursions on the Alaska mosque and that it stop the forced removal of Palestinians from homes that they have occupied for years. Is it your belief that these central issues can now be resolved? So first of all, thank you for having me. An hour and 15 minutes ago, the ceasefire came into practice and I still don't have the details. They were not published yet by either side. So I don't want to address that because I just don't know yet. 
I would like to say, first of all, to thank President Biden's administration for their firm support of the states of Israel's right of defense against the Hamas aggression, Hamas terrorism. And I'd like to respond to what Osama just mentioned before. One has to differentiate between the terms here. When saying Israel is an occupier and then referring to 73 years ago, we are not talking about two-state solution, what should be the future of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We're talking about a completely different thing. Those who claim that Israel is an occupier 73 years ago, when we got the state of Israel acknowledged by the United Nations based on a historic right to come to the state of Israel, to the land of Israel. This means we are coming back to our homeland and claiming that we are coming as occupiers is already the beginning of the false claims, which is preventing the Israelis and Palestinians from going further to look at a bright future together, living in peace next to each other, with each other. As long as the Palestinian side does not acknowledge the rights of the Jewish people to be in Israel as legitimate partners on this land, there will never be peace. And that's why Hamas, a terrorist, vicious terrorist organization that aims at killing civilians, children, mothers. I'll just give you a short story. When I was 14 years old, this didn't start today by rockets coming from the Gaza Strip. My brother's best friend was murdered in a bus bombing by Hamas, aiming where the most children, parents, mothers to blow them up. So they're not acknowledging the fact that Israel should be there. And this is the paradigm we have to change. But Charlie, let me bring you into this discussion because frankly, when I look back at history, I have to also acknowledge what happened after World War II. Part of the reason that Israel was established is because so many countries, including some would say America, refused to accept the Jews in their own territories, in their own countries. And when we look at this, Charlie, I wonder if Americans have an understanding at all, not only of the history, but of the way forward. So when I was a young uh, college student many years ago, I was studying in France uh, for a while, uh, but I wanted to travel. And one of the places I wanted to go to was Israel. And I did, I spent 10 days in Israel. And I'll tell you what, I was young, but I'll tell you what, I was there when there was a bomb scare in Tel Aviv. Uh, I went to Jerusalem. I went to the West Bank. I went to a lot, the southern part of Israel, beautiful place, climbed Mount Sinai. But I'll tell you what, Americans, I don't believe, understand what's going on. And I do think that if we understand what's going on, I think that we would have a better idea of maybe how to solve this. I don't know if America can solve everything. I think we've had some inconsistencies. But if we just take the Jewish state of Israel, which they fought for, they won. It was a desert, they changed it. Israel made, has made some major, major advances in healthcare and industry, et cetera, et cetera. Then you've got Palestinians, that's another state. They don't have a place. What's gonna happen with them? And then there's Hamas. And I think if we can put and understand those three categories, Hamas, I think from what I hear, from everybody here, they're, for lack of a better word, the bad guys. That's a terrorist group. And nobody wants terror. Israel fought and won years ago. And to see those bombs and to be in a state where you are un uneasy all day long does nobody any good. But Americans don't quite understand it. But unless we understand the basics, America, I'm not sure, can really help. Oh, like, I want to give oh, all four of our kids, I, I, I have give more faith. a chance, though, to, to tell us where do we go from here? How do we avoid yet another chapter of this ongoing bloodshed? Fatina. You know, you know what we do? We, we, we stop with the devil being in the details. Israel has for far too long oppressed the Palestinians. It continues to do it. If we look at what happened about a week ago in Al-Aqsa Mosque, where on earth can an entire religion while praying in the holiest months, in the holiest days on earth, be gunned down, their believers gunned down in cold blood, blood we got the live footage. We got the live stream. Al-Aqsa Mosque is exhibit A1 for the entire conflict. It's Israel's the occupying fire, power. It's gone too far for too long. History is part of the discussion, but Americans are smart, and I'm hopeful, and, and I'm really hoping that there's been a change of information, a change of tide. We've been too long muffled by folks that are so staunchly right-wing pro-Israel that people are either too scared or too uninformed to talk. I think the fear is being eliminated. Americans have had enough. 
and um, and the information is finally flowing through accurately. The Bye-bye. worst thing, I'm sorry, the worst thing is for the United States to get more involved. I think President Biden handled it perfectly. He put pressure slowly, slowly for a ceasefire when the time was right. And now we have a ceasefire. When America got in, I agree with Osama. How do you like America's involvement in Iraq or in Lebanon or in Libya or in any of those places? No, no. America should stay out. America should be there to be supportive of the two sides. And let me tell you, the two sides, even with Hamas before this, there was a pipeline, a natural gas pipeline that was agreed to by Israel and Hamas to power Gaza. There are good things going on. There is a maritime border agreement that's in the works between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. So we can even be for the short term enemies and good things can happen. More stuff can flow into Gaza and to rebuild Gaza. There are a lot of hopes. And for the 2 million Palestinians living in Israel that are Israeli citizens that vote, well, they were going to be part of the coalition of the governing coalition of Israel. And Masoud Abbas, the other Abbas is a real hero. He is now saying, we, the Arab, the Palestinian Israelis are going to raise money to rebuild a synagogue in Lod that was burnt down. There are heroic things going on, and we just have to give peace a chance in this Hamas war that stirred everything up. And by the way, there's hundreds of thousands of people, wonderful worshipers that are going to Al-Aqsa that were there, were there just a week ago. There are beautiful things going on. Just give it a chance slowly, slowly. And President Biden knows that's the way to do it, not to cram things down the Palestinians' throats or anyone else's throats. You, so I would Osama, like to also add to- Go ahead. Osama, Daniel, if you want to speak, go ahead. Well, Daniel, go ahead. We are talking about the future and looking together. One has to, and we are living in an age of post-truth. And what Fatina mentioned now is a matter of fact, to say this is the fact for Americans to understand is just not a fact. The fact that one repeats it does not make it the truth. And saying about the Laksa, where in the world do you have tens of thousands of Muslim prayers who are people going to worship in the Laksa mosque? They have complete freedom of worship and prayer throughout the year. Have we ever seen these scenes before in the last two months, three months, four months? No, this is because Hamas, called the people in Jerusalem in in the West Bank to come in the holy month of Ramadan, where it's supposed to be the holy peace month, to come to Jerusalem, to start unrest, to take stones, huge stones, and throw flammable bottles at the police who were standing outside of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Give me a break. And they told them to to shoot innocent women and children in cold blood too, right? Come on. Have some integrity. Have some integrity. I listen. How about, a, how about weapons of mass destruction? Listen, let, let me. That's let me. laughable. I want to lie. Sama, one more word, and I'll, I'll let you finish. I just want to complete my. Yes, go ahead. I promise to do um, that. And then also, I'm continue. We want to look at the future here. If we continue to look, and all the time look to say why the other side is the devil and demon, and call it pro-Palestinian demonstration, where I see flags in Chicago and in Detroit of Hamas, these are not pro-Palestinian demonstration. Yeah. These are anti-Palestinian demonstration. The way to do it is to join. You have a great partner, Rabbi Lupatin and his team. You have the Israeli consulate and the Israeli people who want to stand and walk together with you for a better future to the Middle East, a better future of living together, Arabs and Jews, Muslim, Christian, and Muslim, Christian, and Jews living together. We are in this land together. But as long as you'll continue to say it's them or us in making it the, de- the devil, the demon, it will not work. And Israel will never surrender for terrorism. One has to remember that the only way to continue is through the negotiation table. Osama, let me give you the final, Osama, let me give you the final word very quickly. Can we build on this ceasefire to achieve a lasting peace? Uh, I, I wanted to talk about, about what uh, uh, both our friends said. We live here, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. They are our friends. Our brothers, we work together. Uh, this is not about Jews or Muslims. This is about people who took other people's land. That's it, period. It's about people occupying other people. Now, in this country, we have something that we do all the time. We vilify 
our enemies before we attack them. Now, Hamas, is a Hezb- Hamas and Hezbollah are terrorists. No, they are not. You know who the terrorist is? Oh. Israel. You're talking about your, your relatives that were killed. I feel sorry for you. The United States and Europe sorry, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let, okay, let, 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 let me finish. finish. But do you feel sorry about the 230 Palestinians and 65 children who died? Do you feel Absolutely. bad about it? Yes, Usama, I feel sad. Are you going to continue arming the hell out of I feel sad and empathy Adam, Adam, for every civilian who is hurt. You, you don't. don't. Is this how you, you put two-state solution? No, Hamas is not a terrorist organization. And also Hezbollah, you're so saying, you is they're shooting at civilians, but they're not. You do not negotiate with your friends. You negotiate with your enemies. We exactly. negotiated with, we're negotiating okay. with the Chinese. We're negotiating with the Russians. We are not launching wars against them. We do not go and bomb them and evict them out of their homes. Okay. The Human Rights Watch said right. Israel is an apartheid state. To blow we a bomb, we have to have we have Hamas is a Look, terrorist state. I'm sorry. Israel is, a, is an apartheid state. We're, we're running out of time, and we have to end it right there. But I know one thing. We cannot solve this problem by accusing each other of evil. We That's must right. find a common good in each of us. I agree. Because the bottom we line, we are people. all the same people, and we yes. must find a way to realize and build on that truth. Thank Both you. the Palestinians and the Israelis deserve security and peace. I thank you for your comments and your insights. Stay with us. Much more ahead. Thank you. Amen. Oh, oh thank you. Amen. Coming up, the big debate over vaccine passports. Should you be forced to prove that you got your shot to go to certain places or to do certain things? That and more as Let It Rip continues. Welcome back to Let It Rip. With us right now, Dr. Michael Basuito, a well-known surgeon and conservative member of the Wayne State Board of Governors, State Senator Adam Ollier, a rising Democratic leader and the proud father of two young children in Detroit. Of course, you've already met Charlie. And so we begin tonight with the first timer, the Kalamazoo chiropractor who led the fight to open and unlock Michigan, now running for governor, Republican Garrett Saldano. So Garrett, the South Hill High School has a two-tiered system when it comes to going to prom. If you're vaccinated, you get in free, but if you haven't received your shots, the school will charge you 80 bucks. Word is that you're promoting the protest of this event on Twitter, why? Yeah, we're promoting it because it's segregation, folks. I mean, this is what we've been dealing with all year long, is your constitutional freedom, sacred values, and citizens' rights should never be infringed upon, regardless of a pandemic. And these kids have been through enough. I mean, we've canceled their experiences, diminished their opportunities, diminished their dreams, and now we're gonna hammer down on them and require them to get vaccines and vaccine passports. I mean, what, what's next? Show us your papers. And so this goes against everything that this country has been founded upon, and we must stand up for these kids because if we don't stand up now, this is a slippery slope. What's next? Are we going to have to show our passport to go buy groceries, to go to other places? And so we need to stop this madness right now. Well, Adam, you heard what Garrett said, that these vaccination passports are a way to segregate people, to separate the have from the have-nots. What do you think? I think you and I are the only black people, Hugh. And when we talk about segregation, segregation was meant to say that black people were inferior. It was not and is not saying, hey, if you make a decision about what you are willing to do or not do, that it doesn't impact me. I have two young children. And we made all of of their parents and anyone who interact with them get vaccinated because they were taking risks that we were unwilling to do. Now, what this school did was says, hey, we understand that you are minimizing our risk if you are vaccinated. You are keeping our kids safe and you are making sure that we don't have an incident in a month or two months where a bunch of people got sick and or died because they got COVID because we were being irresponsible. This is about being responsible and risk mitigation. This is how you're supposed to govern. This is how you're supposed to lead. Dr. I disagree one hundred percent. Can I respond to that real quick? Uh, real quick, and then we got to go to the doctor. Go ahead, real quick. Because here's the thing: like, give me a documented case where a child gave the teacher COVID and then the teacher died. I don't give think me a documented, documented case, case where somebody died from showing that they got vaccinated. For years, when you travel, you have to show when you're going into another country what vaccines you have because they are concerned with the spread of infectious diseases. This is a simple decision about health. You do not have the freedom to breathe dangerous air on me. You do not have the freedom to walk up and punch me in the face because that causes harm to me. We are talking about liability and keeping people safe. If you are that concerned about choice, I think there are a lot of things that we should be thinking about and whether you want to go to the event. They're having a private event that does not harm anybody by them being safe. 
Dr. Basuito, no, I- let me bring you in. Because in, Dr. Basuito, in some places now, especially hospitals, they are requiring their workers, their nurses, the doctors to be vaccinated. So why shouldn't other businesses be allowed to do the same? Amazon no, I, is doing I, I that right now. I disagree with that because this is still under emergency use authorization. And if you look at what happened and what's happening in our government right now, we're trying to move from this cradle to grave, total domination of government over everything in our lives. And it's crazy. So let, let me just give you some numbers. Over 70% of the COVID deaths are in the age group 70 and over. You're about two to three times more likely to die from COVID as you are from an automobile, automobile accident. However, less than 3% of the automobile accident deaths are in the age group over 70. So if we're really concerned about saving lives, what are we gonna do? Let the government step in and say, nobody can drive anymore because all these young people are dying from car accidents. Since when does the government get to decide the risk that we take as Americans? I think that we're getting away from the whole basis on which this country was founded, and I'm against this. We're gonna stigmatize people. There's already an industry out there of people producing fake COVID vaccination IDs. This is, this is crazy, and we're gonna, we're gonna stigmatize them, and I think it's a HIPAA violation. Why do people need to know whether I'm vaccinated or not? I agree but with John, the gubernatorial <laughs> candidate. Charlie, is this a violation of privacy rights or simply a common sense idea to keep us all safe? It's a safety issue. Where did, did I miss something here? Did the government ever mandate a vaccine? I'm missing this. I don't think, Adam, did you make that in this legislature? No, I don't, and it's not I, happening, but we do mandate are, They're voluntary. You don't need a vaccine. You don't want a vaccine. You've got a vaccine, but you may not be able to get it on an airplane. You may may not be able to work for certain places. You may not be able to go to certain stores. And this is private industry. Republicans love private industry. Let the private world control. And if the private business says, "Hey, if you want to work here, you need a vaccine," you get a vaccine, or you get a different job. I'm not hearing anything at all about government mandating vaccines at all. And look, if you want to fly to Europe this summer you're going to need to show proof that you got your shot before you can I, I enter some country. I've been planning Bordeaux this summer. I've been planning a trip. I love wine. I want to go. But if the airline says I got to get a vaccine and I want to drink wine, let me see the bath. I'm going to go. I'm going to get the vaccine. You know, but this is, it's a choice I have. It's a choice. And everybody should respect the choice. There are a lot of reasons yes. maybe not to get the vaccine. But then Thank you're going you, to get something else. That's it. It's good to see two Republicans say that they agree with choice, but we mandate that people have car seats and do all kinds of things because we want people to be safe. It's a simple fact. But don't stigmatize people for their choice and don't make somebody get something that's under emergency use authorization before it's been fully approved. Agree. The people who are working next to you are protected, doctor. Don't you want to know that? That, that the person who is next to you in that operating room is also vaccinated? And it's risk I take. You know, I lived, I, I grew up in my career as a resident during the HIV crisis, where if you got exposed, we thought that it was 100% infection rate and it was 100% mortality. And now we found that it's really not transmitted that easily. I mean, we've learned a lot. I remember in the early COVID days where I have my oldest daughter, anything that I delivered to her house, it sat in the garage before for nine days before she opened it because of everything she was told by the government. She was told that you had to wear double max and that mm-hmm. you know that this was the infection rate. It was all wrong. We need well, now we we substituted we... political science for biological science, and that's a problem today. And, and well, speaking of science, that... real quick, why aren't we talking about anybody that's gotten this virus naturally? I appreciate your comments immunity. and your insights. I, and look, and it, it happens. People are immune, and we don't know it. But the point is, we have to be safe. And if private businesses want to impose a requirement of vaccinations on their employees, what's wrong with that? All right, panel, thank you so much. And we appreciate you. Hopefully, we'll have time for final thoughts. Stay with us. Two brief seconds for final thoughts, beginning with Garrett. Go. Make sure you check us out online at garrettformichigan.com, folks. Adam. Get your vaccine, it's the only way to get back to normal. Dr. Basuido. Listen, from everything I'm seeing in the hospitals, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Just use common sense, and I think we're gonna get back to normal in the near future. Charlie. Remember, we can disagree, but let's get along. (laughs) Thanks for watching this edition of Let It Rip.